Assalamu alaikum and good day everyone. This is video 6, the last video for part 4, the analysis process introduction to data flow diagram. In this video, we will discuss on how to partition a DFD. It is expected before you watch this video, you have understand everything that has been discussed in video part 1 until video part 5. It is expected that you will be able to understand a case study or from a certain project, you will be able to create a context diagram, diagram 0 and also a child diagram for the case study or the project. It is also expected that you have created an error-free diagram and also you'll be able to understand how to transform from a logical DFD to a physical DFD. Partitioning the physical DFD is the last step in creating a DFD. Step 7. Partitioning is the process where we need to examine the DFD itself and determine whether it should be divided or grouped into a collection of manuals, procedures and computer programs, whether we should group the processes together based on the system component and it is being presented by a dash line drawn around the process or the group of process that should be placed in a single computer program. The reason why we need to do partitioning if we wanted to make sure if there are different user groups for the system, the timing that is done for the system whether it's a batch or automated process, if the system if the process has similar tasks to each other, the efficiency, the efficiency of the system itself and also the consistency and security of the data. Let us look into detail of the figure. As you can see here, this is a diagram zero, a part of a diagram zero of a system. Here we can see that there are five processes involved process 1 at customer order, process 2 at customer record, process 3 produce picking slips, process 4 prepare shipping statement and also process 5 ship customer order. Based on all of this process, it is seen here that we have two enti uh, three entities involved which is the inventory control department, the customer, and also the warehouse. Here, we can see that there are four partitions that is done to this diagram zero. The first partition, where we group together process one and process two, because both of these process indicate that it can be done in a single program where the customer is the one that will initiate the process and the customer need to add their order and also add their customer record. So both of this process is being initiated by the customer. The second partition that we can see is for process 3 because this process represents that it is it has a computer output and also a computer input, meaning that this process is being initiated automatically when an order came in from the order file data store and automatically it will produce a picking list to be sent to the warehouse. Process 4 is another partition where it will produce a record in batch processes. Both process 3 and process 4 is partitioned because 
they will be they will be performed in a different time and it will automatically create a report to be sent to another entity or another process another example that we can see for partitioning is in this child diagram this is a child diagram for cost registration system where as you can see this is a physical diagram here the three processes process 1.1 process 1.2 and process 1.3 is done to enroll a students into a certain course. In this diagram, we can partition process 1.1 and 1.2 as both these process indicate that it will do automated checking for requirement and availability. Whereas process 1.3 can be partitioned as this process, it will indicate that it will be an automated enrollment or automated data input into a data store. And that is the end for part 6. In summary, topic 4 shows us how we can create a data flow diagram based on the steps that we have mentioned from video part 1 until part 6. Here we can see that the data flow diagram is a structured analysis and design tools that will allow the analyst to visually represent the system and subsystem based on the interrelated data flows. Next, you should able to understand on how to create the DFD and able to know all of the symbols that involve in creating a DFD. You should also know what is the difference between a logical and a physical DFD and how we can create a physical DFD based on the crude matrix and also from the logical data flow that we have created. You also should be able to understand how to partition the processes in the DFD based on certain characteristic of the process that we have. That's it for topic 4, introduction to DFD. You will continue the design, the analysis process in the next topic. Thank you.